Hello everyone, welcome to our security update where we frequently address the latest security issues in Africa. Here are the notable stories making headlines this week. African Union in Tulsi, Somalia's peacekeepers drew down post request. Ethiopian security forces now suspect in Boko Haram Al Shabaab group members. Somalia's southwestern president launches second phase of anti Al Shabaab war. Welcome to the program. The African Union has officially endorsed Somalia's request to the UN Security Council for a three-month tactical pause in the drawdown of international troops engaging in the fight against Al-Shabaab group in the central regions of Somalia. This decision comes in response to reported military setbacks as confirmed by the officials. The African Union has officially endorsed Somalia's request to the UN Security Council for a three-month tactical pause in the drawdown of international troops engaged in the fight against Al-Shabaab in the central regions of Somalia. This decision comes in response to reported military setbacks as confirmed by the officials. In a formal statement released by the African Union's Peace and Security Council, the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia expressed its strong support for the request to halt the drawdown of 3,000 of its uniformed personnel. The Council serving as the primary decision-making part of the African Union for Conflict Prevention, Management and Resolution also uploaded the commitment made by troop contributing nations including Kenya, Ethiopia, Burundi, Djibouti and Uganda. These nations pledged to collaborate with Somalia and it is part in us to secure the necessary financial support crucial for the successful transition mission. The African Union's second phase troop drawdown initiative aim is to withdraw 3,000 peacekeepers from Somalia. To date, the mission has already relocated over 2,000 peacekeepers from the Horn of African nation. Mogadishu's appeal to the UN Security Council underscores the urgent need to address significant challenges and profound implications for Somalia's security transition. In a joint operation, Ethiopian security forces have apprehended several individuals suspected of having linkages to the notorious Boko Haram and Al Shabaab groups. According to local officials from Sedama Region Peace and Security, Peru, the suspects were captured in the midst of planning potential terror attacks across Ethiopia, allegedly in collaboration with transnational terror organizations and armed rebel factions. The Sidama Region Peace and Security Bureau released an official press statement confirming the successful operation. It was carried out jointly by the Sidama Region Security Task Force, the Ethiopian National Defense Force and the Ethiopian National Intelligence and Security Services NISS. While the statement did not specify the precise number of detained suspects or the specific nature of the planned terror attacks, it did shed light on the advanced communication equipment discovered in the possession of the suspect. The communication gear was allegedly used for covert communication among the apprehended individuals. Al-Shabaab, a militant rebel group notorious for its activities in conflict ridden Somalia, has previously been implicated in terror attacks in various East African nations. On the other hand, Boko Haram, originating from Nigeria, has been linked to acts of terror across West and Central African countries. The combination of the two could be disastrous to any country. The president of the Southwest Regional Estate in Somalia, Abdassiz Hassan Mohamed Laftagren, has officially announced the commencement of the second phase of the anti Al Shabaab operations in Southwest State, Somalia. The president of the Southwest State Regional State in Somalia, Adasis Hassan Mohamed Laftagren, has officially announced the commencement of the second phase of anti Al Shabaab operations in the Southwest State. He made the pronouncement during a high level preparation meeting for the anti Al Shabaab operations in Paidawa, which was attended by high ranking representatives from the federal government including military officials. Lafter Garen said that they are no longer defending themselves against the Al-Shabaab group. Instead, they must move forward, making the third federal member state to make a similar decision of the Gelmuduk and Hirshabeli states. The regional president emphasizes the need for unity in the fight to eliminate the group 
and urge the people and the government must stand up to fight against Al Shabaab as there is no room for self defense anymore. In August 2022, President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed launched a total war against Al Shabaab. In the first phase, Somalian forces focused on the central regions of Hirshabele and Galmudu supporting local clans that repel it against al-Shabaab. Somalia's Minister of Security Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh Ali Dodishe and Somalia Police Commissioner Sulub Ahmed Firin had a significant meeting with Ambassador of Qatar to Somalia Abdullah Salim al Aimi in Mogadishu. Somalia's Minister of Security Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh Ali Dodishe and Somalia Police Commissioner General Sulub Ahmed Fidin held a significant meeting with Ambassador of Qatar to Somalia, Abdullah Salim al Nuaimi, in Mogadishu. According to officials, the purpose of the meeting was to explore avenues for enhancing collaboration between the law enforcement agencies of the two nations, focusing on combating organized crime and terrorism. The discussion is centered around strengthening the bilateral relationship between the police forces, crucial in the face of security threats posed by Al-Shabaab in the Horn of Africa region. While specific details about the collaboration were not disclosed by the officials, it is widely speculated that the partnership will involve joint surveillance efforts aimed at thwarting potential future attacks orchestrated by Al-Shabaab. The federal government of Somalia has openly expressed concerns over retaliatory actions by Al-Shabaab, particularly targeting civilian populated areas following the group's recent setbacks on the front line against the National Defense Forces. Welcome to the program again. The Junta in the Republic of Niger has announced a massive cut in its projected spending due to party sanctions by the regional ECOWAS, EU, US and other partners of the July coup. The Abdurrahman Chiani-led government said the cut became necessary as sanctions took hold of the country's economy. Making documentaries is one of the most creative craft and challenging endeavors you can be involved in. It is an effective strategy to inform, persuade, educate, defend the perspective and shed light on various issues, policies and activities. At CBA TV, documentary production is our forte. We capture every TikTok detail of events in highest resolution to tell the story you care about, from politics to human hunger, research-based content, educative and informative. We also help you project your story in a dynamic perspective that attracts the world views of the target audience as there is no better or more powerful way to place the organization's values and achievements than to make an excellent documentary film. No doubt, our strength lies in these ventures and we pride in many award-winning documentaries which have been earning accolades across Africa and beyond. Let's tell your story. The junta in the Republic of Niger has announced a massive cut in its projected spending due to party sanctions by the regional ECOWAS, EU, US and other partners of the July coup. But we will be back after the short break. Due to a series of international sanctions imposed on Niger after the military took power in a July coup, the government said its projected spending for the year 2023 has been caught by 40 percent, severely stifling the economy in one of the world's poorest countries. In an announcement on Saturday, the junta that took power in Niger said the court became necessary as the sanctions imposed on it took spiral effects. The budget for this year was reduced from 3.29 trillion local currency to 1.98 trillion according to the statement by the junta without specifying where the savings would be made on july 26 soldiers from the presidential guard detained president mohammed bazoum and established a transitional administration the latest in a string of coups in west africa's sahel region the regional body ECOWAS, the european union and the united states all condemned the seizure and levied penalties, frozen assets or withheld aid. Niger largely depends on aid from other countries, while its economic activities center on subsistence agriculture, animal husbandry, re-export trade and export of uranium, 
the radioactive metal widely used for nuclear energy and treating cancer. The country has been plagued by long-running insecurity caused by violent extremist insurgency groups and the courts in spending could affect its internal security structure. Kamad Sadiq, CBTV. Kenya has received 17 million US dollars in the past five years for its contribution to the Somalia peacekeeping mission, now known as the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia, whose mandate is set to end in December next year, according to the Defense Cabinet Secretary. The decision comes after the UN Security Council granted approval last week for a Kenya-led multinational security force to be deployed to Haiti. Nairobi had pledged to send 1,000 police officers as part of this mission. However, the suspension was granted on Monday by a Nairobi court following a case brought forward by opposition politician Ikuru Okot. Alcott, a lawyer who played a key role in drafting Kenya's revised 2010 constitution, argued that the deployment was unconstitutional as it lacked legal or treaty backing. He also raised concerns about Kenya deploying its police overseas while grappling with security challenges with its own borders. High Court George Enoch Mwita in response to Arcot claims, said he is satisfied that the application and petition raise substantial issues of national importance. The judge issued a conservatory order preventing the deployment of police officers to Haiti or any other country until October 24, 2023. As outlined in the ruling, Haiti, the Western Hemisphere's poorest nation, has been enduring years of turmoil with armed gangs controlling part of the country, resulting in brutal violence. Also, the nation's economy and public health system have been in dire straits. It's worth noting that the details of Kenya's deployment are yet to be finalized as parliamentary approval is still pending as required by Kenyan law. The UN-backed mission, initially approved for a one-year duration, envisions Kenya's police working in conjunction with their heightened counterparts who are facing overwhelming odds in their battle against the gangs. The mission's objective is to provide operational support to the heightened national police and strengthen their capabilities through joint security operations, as stated in the U.S. The Somali National Army claimed to have killed 20 Al-Shabaab fighters in a joint operation carried out by the defense forces along with international partners in Muduk region of Galmuduk state. The Somalia National Army claimed to have killed 20 Al-Shabaab fighters in a joint operation carried by the Defense Forces along with international partners in Modog, region of Gal Modog State. The joint forces targeted Al-Shabaab on vehicles, burnt down and destroyed all their belongings, including their military consignments, food, medicine, and explosive elements during the operation overnight, according to a statement released by the Somali Ministry of Information. The statement said the operation's primary objectives were to eliminate the Al-Shabaab and disable their network, saying it happened as planned and successfully. The Somalia National Army said they killed over 100 Al-Shabaab five days earlier in the same region, while the ministry also released another report of the military operation where 1,650 militants and 550 others injured in the past two months in Israel and Galmudok State in Somalia. However, Al-Shabaab has not yet provided any comment regarding these claims made by the government as the fight between two sides intensified in the past few weeks. And with that story of the Somali National Army claiming to have killed 20 Al-Shabaab fighters in a joint operation carried out by the Defense Forces, along with other international partners in Muduk region of Gal Muduk State, we'll wrap up our program for this time. Thank you for watching and see you soon.